Hi, it's Kevin here from HowToBlogWithWordPress.net, and today I'm going to show you the second plugin that I use to speed up my blog. But before I do that, I'm going to show you the results of it before and then again after I install this plugin. Uh, well, install it, install it, and configure it. So I'm going to go and enter the blog title in here, and I'm going to run the analysis of GT metrics right now. It'll take a moment or two and then we'll get the results. Okay the results are in and for the site uh, we're looking at a load time of about almost 18 and a half seconds. It tells me that the total page size is 780 kilobytes and the number of requests is 38. So basically it's requesting 38 things load in the page as well as the page itself. These could be uh, HTTP requests, they could be CSS, JavaScript, all that sort of stuff. So that's what it's taken without this plugin installed. Now if we go to the blog and we go to install plugins, we're going to search for W3 Total Cache. Uh, we're going to install this and then once it's installed we'll activate it and we'll go set it up. Okay so it's installed we're now going to activate the plugin. Okay the plugin is installed so we'll go make sure it's in the list. It'll be near the bottom because it's WP or W3 sorry and there it is and you can see that it's installed. Now if we go further up the top here we'll see a new tab has appeared and it says performance. So if we open up performance and we're going to go to general settings. Okay in general settings um, we want to enable page caching, we want to enable minification, we want to do not enable database caching or object caching so don't do those. Um, a content delivery network if you're using one will I haven't got time in this this video to go over CDNs um, so we'll come back to that one in another video browser caching we definitely want to do and again obviously you can link to the W3 Edge if you like the people that made the plugin if you're really feeling um, generous and I recommend you do these guys give you this for free and enable dashboard widget news if you want to do that if you don't if you untick that, you won't see the dashboard news in your widget when you first log into your database. Every time you change something, make sure you save the changes in the individual sections. Okay? That's your general settings. Okay, the beauty of this plugin is right from the get go, it's already saving us time um, by acting in the background. So I'm going to show you now another performance for our current website. Bearing in mind it's 18.49 seconds. So I'm going to retest the page and we're going to see if it's improved any just installing the plugin. Okay, so just installing the plugin and not doing any optimizations whatsoever, right out the box we are having a page load time of 4.31 seconds. So we've gone down from 18 and a half seconds to four and a half seconds okay and our speed our page speed has gone up from I, I can't even remember what it was before it was probably in the low 60s to 82 and to 79 in the Y slowed grading and that actually says the average is 82 so right on the average and this one is average of 77 so a little bit above that and you can see that we've got a, a couple of red areas enable GZIP compression and server resources yeah we could do the server ones um, and we could fix that if we wanted to, but right now I'm happy at 4.31 seconds. If I go to minification now, and we'll let that page load a second. Okay, I'm at my minify settings, and if I go down the minification settings and I go to um, CSS and JS, JavaScript is here, and CSS is just below it all of my original content has been kept as it was so all my CSS files are in the right order 
and all my JS files are in the right order. But what you'll do when you first come here is you won't have these. This list here will not exist. Okay, so what we're going to do is you would come up and you would click the help wizard and it, this little help wizard here and it will go away and find all on, it'll interrogate your site and find all of your JavaScript and your CSS files and it would list them and it would list them like this yep yeah. make sure you got the one that you're on and it'll tell you that it's actually that's the wrong one the active one make sure the active one is here and what you do is you'd come in here and you've got your JS your JavaScript in a list now here's where it gets interesting there's a rule that says um, CSS must load before JavaScript okay so your blog theme the colors, the fonts, um, where things sit in your blog, all has to load before your scripts do, because scripts, JavaScript, unlike CSS, a JavaScript has to completely load before your blog can move on to the next function that it has to perform to load your entire page. So JavaScript, you want to load all of your JavaScript after all your CSS files are loaded. Okay, so the way to do that in this particular field here we've got our JavaScript it's clicked to be enable it okay and what we're gonna do is all our JavaScript we're gonna come to this little drop down here open that up and you'll see there's blocking and non blocking now this is very much a case you have to experiment with your blog and your theme to see what works best for you the first thing I would suggest you do is you go to blocking and you embed after body so you click every one of these and you embed it after the body tag okay and you do that for all of the ones that are in this this list click that and then click embed after body okay once you've done that uh, and you've actually done all those settings and you've clicked save changes that's the JavaScript all loading independently of your CSS script. If you come down here to the CSS section you'll see you don't have the facility to determine where your CSS gets embedded. So you don't need to do anything with these once it's found all those, those uh, lists. You just come down here and you click Save Changes. Uh, that's the first of the changes we're going to make for our optimization. Uh, the next one has to do with how often and the time scale you do page caching okay so now we've set up our minification settings for CSS and JavaScript we're now going to go and take a look at our page cache and our browser cache these are the two most important ones to get right browser cache more than anything else so if we connect to browser cache here's a browser cache and this is what we're going to set our browser cache up to do so in each case, in the first one where it says general, we're going to set all of these with a tick in them. Okay, you'll find some 404 exception errors as robots.txt in your sitemap. Okay, you don't need to enter those, they're already entered. Leave those alone. You'll also find cascading style sheets and JavaScript. Again, leave all of these checked. But this drop down list, make sure it's set to expires in seconds with cache with max age okay again if you remember if you change this to save the changes do that for all of these three for both hate JavaScript and CSS up here HTML here and for your media and other files but you'll also notice that there is an expires header lifetime here and it's set in in seconds okay it's set to 180 seconds for HTML and it's set for the same here for cascading style sheets and JavaScript as it is for your media and other files when you get here this will not be as high as this I think it starts off at 840,000 seconds um, which is a long time of course but we want to set it so that it's over a month we want to do it for something ridiculous and this is the recommended setting that Google recommends um, for your expires headers. What it basically means is it caches the header because the headers are static. It doesn't change unless you change it. 
so your header won't change so therefore it's a big image in your um, site usually um, and because it doesn't doesn't change why have it redrawn every time it takes time to load so we do that with this and this is caching this so essentially what's happened is that it's downloaded that image to your web browser and every time you access the page it loads it from your computer rather from for your site so your site appears to load quicker even in actual fact if it doesn't now those are the only changes we need to make to increase the processes that allow W3 Total Cache to work right out of the box. You don't need to set anything else up and you might go and do another performance check um, to retest the page to see how long that takes after you've made those changes. It won't necessarily improve it, in fact it might actually slow it down. So you have to play with the plugin and do a little bit of playing around to determine what's best for your site as we go through the process. Any changes that break your site undo them okay don't live with it and remember the important thing is the page load time now I'm down to 1.61 seconds and I've increased my Y slow grade by about 3% just with those little few changes that I've made so you can see that you can increase it what's important is your page load speed we're still loading a fairly large page at 697 kilobytes and I've now got a total request number of 30 where I started off with about 36. So each little tweak you make will improve your page load speed. Go get W3 Total Cache, set it up on your site and then do a performance check before you do it, do a performance check after, fine tune it and get your page speed down to as low as this with just using those two plugins which is WP Smash It and W3 Total Cache. This has been Kevin from HowToBlogWithWordPress.net. Happy blogging. Thanks for watching. Bye bye now.